Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today, we're going to be exploring death in Harry Potter. Death is a central theme to the Harry Potter books, playing a vital role in both Harry's life and experiences at Hogwarts. Near the very beginning of the first book, right from the get-go, we're given information pertaining to the deaths of Harry's parents, and given a glimpse into what sort of an impact it had on him and his life. But it wasn't just Harry that dealt with death. In fact, the primary antagonist had a unique relationship to death as well, with Voldemort constantly pushing for a way of achieving immortality. Voldemort's obsession with living forever and the value he placed in the world of the living is repeated over and over throughout the books and films. To him, there is nothing worse than dying. There is nothing worse than death, Dumbledore, snarled Voldemort. You are quite wrong, said Dumbledore. One of the main messages of the Harry Potter books is that death is not absolute, nor is it something that we should be worrying about. It's continually reinforced that death is simply a part of life, and that instead, our focus should be on seeking love and friendship, enjoying the time that we do have. But for some, like Voldemort, that message will never resonate which is why all sorts of methods of achieving immortality have been concocted in the wizarding world. Today, we're going to be uncovering all five of these methods. Let's get into it. 1. Time Magic The Harry Potter story is rife with all sorts of inaccuracies and inconsistencies when it comes to the manipulation of time. This is expected, however, as fully diving into a complex subject like time travel would probably require a dedicated book worth of explanations all on its own. With that said, however, time and how it can be manipulated is haphazardly approached in Harry Potter, which means it's on our radar. In the Department of Mysteries inside of the Ministry of Magic, there's even a time room, a place dedicated to the complex field of study. But what if I told you that immortality could be achieved through time travel? While I haven't fully explored how this could be possible, it seems, in theory, a little dubious, as presumably you'd still age regardless of where you travel to in time. But in Harry Potter, there's a way around that. During the battle inside the Ministry of Magic, we see a Death Eater whose head is trapped in a bell jar, transforming back and forth from being a baby to an adult. Look out, said Neville, horrified. He was staring at the Death Eater's head in the bell jar. All three of them raised their wands again, but none of them struck. They were all gazing, open-mouthed, appalled, at what was happening to the man's head. It was shrinking very fast, growing bolder and bolder, the black hair and stubble retracting into his skull, his cheeks becoming smooth, his skull round and covered with a peach-like fuzz. A baby's head now sat grotesquely on top of the thick, muscled neck of the Death Eater as he struggled to get up again. But even as they watched, their mouths open, the head began to swell to its previous proportions again. Thick black hair was sprouting from the paint and chin. In theory, if you were to get your entire body into the jar, you'd regress to being a child, and presumably gain the ears back. However, this would not be useful unless you'd be able to preserve your adult memories in the process. Nonetheless, this is a way of achieving immortality. 2. Philosopher's Stone The Philosopher's Stone was created by Nicolas Flamel, a French scribe born in the year 1330 in the city of Pontrois. Flamel, who was adapted from a real-world historical figure, was one of the longest living wizards in Harry Potter, dying just shy of 700 years old. But if Flamel had wanted to, he could have lived forever. And that's because he was the inventor and primary holder of the Philosopher's Stone. One of the main functions of the Philosopher's Stone was to turn any metal into gold, which could have made anyone who held it in their possession very rich. But while that may sound impressive, that was only the stone's second most important capability. With a magical artifact like the Philosopher's Stone in your hands, you could have eternal life. Flamel, along with his wife Perenelle, were able to produce an elixir of life from the stone, allowing them to live ludicrously long lives. In fact, both of them would have been able to live forever, but Flamel, 
aware of the dangers of what could happen if the stone fell into the wrong hands, destroyed it. As far as living forever goes, this may have been the best way of achieving it, as Flamel never seemed to have any side effects from the elixir he created. What's important to note, however, is that Flamel did appear to look very physically old. Whether that's a product of the stone simply slowing the physical aging process, or an outcome of Flamel only starting to use the stone in later life, is unclear. The best part about the Philosopher's Stone, it may even exist outside of Harry Potter. I did not invent the concept of the Philosopher's Stone, which is a legendary substance that was once believed to be real, and the true goal of alchemy. The properties of my Philosopher's Stone conform to most of the attributes the ancients ascribed to it. The stone was believed to turn base metals into gold, and also to produce the elixir of life, which could make you immortal. Genuine alchemists, the forerunners of chemists and physicists, such as Sir Isaac Newton and the real Nicola Flamel, sought, sometimes over lifetimes, to discover the secret of its creation. 3. Unicorn Blood During one of Harry's first visits to the Forbidden Forest, he stumbles upon Voldemort drinking the blood of a slain unicorn. At this point in time, Voldemort was still in his non-corporeal form, but by possessing Quirrell, he was able to use him to drink the blood on his behalf. Furthermore, Quirrell's body was dying as it was hosting Voldemort. After scaring off Voldemort, the centaur Firenze explains unicorn blood to Harry. The blood of a unicorn will keep you alive, even if you're an inch from death, but at a terrible price. You have slain something pure and defenseless to save yourself, and you will have but a half-life, a cursed life, from the moment the blood touches your lips. It seems like drinking unicorn blood, despite potentially being one of the worst options, is a valid way of achieving immortality. However, you will need to continually drink it to have a sustained effect. 4. Potions In Chapter 8 of the Philosopher's Stone, Snape introduces the subject of potion making. You are here to learn the subtle science and exact art of potion making. As there is little foolish wand waving here, many of you will hardly believe this is magic. I don't expect you will really understand the beauty of the softly simmering cauldron with its shimmering fumes, the delicate power of liquids that creep through human veins, bewitching the mind, ensnaring the senses. I can teach you how to bottle fame, brew glory, even stop a death, if you aren't as big a bunch of dunderheads as I usually have to teach. And what I want to focus on is the last part where Snape says, Stopper Death. The potion Snape mentions here is not referenced anywhere in canon, and it's entirely possible that Snape was simply trying to impress his students. But this potion is mentioned nonetheless. Another potion that I theorize could possibly sustain life is the Polyjuice Potion. As we know, Polyjuice Potion allows witches and wizards to transform into and take on the appearance of others. However, the specifics of this potion are never disclosed. Like just how closely you resemble the witch or wizard after the transformation. Do your internal organs change? Do you take on their vitality? If a Polyjuice Potion truly does change everything about a witch or wizard, then it's entirely possible that one could continually leverage Polyjuice Potion in order to continually transform into younger, healthier witches and wizards, essentially staying alive forever. 5. Horcruxes Of the Horcrux, wickedest of magical inventions, we shall not speak nor give direction. You knew it was coming. Horcruxes are potentially the most well-known method of achieving immortality, this of course being due to the fact that this was Voldemort's method of choice. A Horcrux is created when a wizard takes an object and binds a piece of their soul to it. The purpose is immortality, with the logic going that as long as a piece of your soul survives within the object, then you can never truly die. It's magic so dark, so heinous, that it was kept a secret from most of the wizarding world. To make a Horcrux, a damaged piece of one's soul must be removed from the creator's body and put into an inanimate object or living host, making the creator immortal. In order to do this, the witch or wizard who wishes to split their soul 
needs to commit the ultimate act of violence and evil, murder. And not just any murder, they have to deliberately kill someone without regret or remorse. It must be done with the utmost evil intent, resulting in a metaphysical damaging of the murderer's soul. After they have killed their victim, the witch or wizard uses a powerful incantation to remove this damaged part of their soul from their body, placing it in a vessel outside of themselves, and then performing an unknown ritual to bound the fragmented soul to its new container. Creating horcruxes, though effective, is certainly one of the most extreme and in my opinion inadvisable ways of achieving immortality, as if things go south, you may just end up like Voldemort. And that's it for this video. If you enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, to the well-organized mind, death is but the next great adventure.